Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Reading Jeremiah, chapter 29, from 1, excuse me, not 1, from verse 4 through verse 14. I'm condensing it for the sake of time. And listen, this is what I want to say. This is for those of you who cannot figure out why you seem to be stuck in this part of your life. This chapter of your life is starting to feel like a prison cell. And it seems like you're marking time and you're wondering when is the promise going to come? When is the fulfillment coming? But this part, this is what I'm reading for you and we'll talk about in Pat's Two Cents to help you understand what God is doing in our lives when we are in these predicaments. All right. Starting at verse, yeah, starting at verse 4. Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that ye may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there, and not diminished. Let me repeat that. That ye may be increased there and not diminished and seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace pray right where you are okay let me get back to the word for thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. <laughs> For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts I have. Let me repeat that. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. <laughs> now, wow, this is heavy duty because this says a lot more than what we realize. I'm not dealing with a physical exile right here. I'm dealing with a circumstantial exile. Now, this is why I repeated that sentence. Pat's two cents. That's where we are right now. The reason I repeated that sentence, dealing with you will be increased there and not diminished. When you go into a situation that is very uncomfortable, nine times out of ten, our response is, I don't like it but you can't get out no matter what you try no matter what schemes and how you finagle and who you talk to and what you try to work out you are stuck it is the most frustrating feeling 
But what you have to do, when he said plant and, and, and raise and get married and go through all the motions of being alive and enjoying your life, enjoy where you are. Because what happens when God fixes you in a place, it, it puts you in a fix you can't get out of. He's working something in you so that when you do get out of it, when it's time, you will be bigger, more mature. You'll be more loving. You, the anointing will be on you. You will be equipped to handle the blessing. But right now, we got to get rid of the attitudes. We got to get rid of the flesh. We have to get rid of the worldly ways. We have to get rid of those weaknesses that hinder and stifle your progress. We have to get rid of the emotional baggage. Because in so doing, you will grow and you will become the thing of beauty that God wants to use and that God wants to send back to be a much bigger blessing than you can be right now. You don't see it. You don't see that you got a stain on the back of your pants. You don't see that your shoe is has got a hole starting down at the bottom. You don't see that you are having a problem working with your hand. You don't see the nervous condition that's going on. You don't see the heart condition, the mind condition. You don't see that. God does. I'm not talking physical either. All right. So when God is trying to work something out of you so he can work good stuff into you, you've got to be about living your life. You don't sit down. You don't pout. You don't cry the blues. You don't complain to God. You don't blame God. You don't fuss and cuss and, and, and just have an effort attitude and decide, well, and I just won't do anything. Then you're pouting. Watch that. Live. Live your life to the fullest within the will of God. His promise is sure. My question is, are you? When it gets uncomfortable, when you're doing the caregiving, when you've got to take time off your job, and you've got to work with this one and work with that one, this family member needs help, and that family member needs help, and it seems like you, 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 you know, you're getting responsibilities you did not ask for. You didn't ask for this. You didn't volunteer. This thing got dumped on you, baby, and it's hard. And it really chaps your hide. But when it stops hurting you, that's when you're ready. You know when you're ready. When you have embraced it and said, I'm going to give this thing all I got. Lord, give me all the love I can handle. Give me all the peace. That's right. Let me really be a blessing in this situation. Then when you are a blessing and when you have embraced and you have worked on yourself, on your attitude, you have mortified the deeds of the flesh. You have refrained from the cussing and cussing out. You have stopped having hissy fits because you sought God to get the hissy fits out of you. You have asked God constantly to erase and remove your selfishness. And you have given it all. You have given those people your all. You have given your family your all. You have asked God, what more can I do? How can I do this in a grand way? So that when I leave, when you pull me out of this fix, Everybody around me will be better off for knowing me because of what you did in my life and what I allowed you to do. I always say, the past two cents, I always say, when you're in a trial, a fix, 
a tribulation, a circumstance, a situation. It starts hurting at the beginning because you don't like it. It's inconvenient. It can be tight. It can be confining. It can be uh, oppressive at times. But listen, I'm not talking abuse. I ain't dealing. It's just life. But listen, there comes a point when it no longer hurts and you start feeling the flow of love and joy and peace because you stop fighting it. You're going with the flow. And because you're going with the flow, you're learning and you're picking up things and you're being equipped in areas where before you were weak and you're being stretched in areas where you were short. I am telling you, when God does a work in you, it is phenomenal. So this is what I'm saying. God is telling you that, yes, I know the plans I have for you. Yeah, that's going to work. But right now, Live. Give into marriage. Give yourself to the caregiving. Give yourself to your job. Give yourself to your marriage. Give it all you got. Give it all you got, baby. Because the more you give of yourself, the more I got waiting for you on the other side of this trial. Yes. And when you get to the point where you're ready to settle there and say, wow, this has really become a blessing, way more than I thought it would ever be. That's when your attitude has adjusted. And when your attitude has adjusted, get ready, baby, because your change is coming. And God will bring you out. And you will be facing a tremendous blessing. You have no idea. Go with the flow. Cooperate with God. Don't fight it. Give it all you got. And see what happens when you come out on the other side. You'll be a heck of a lot greater in stature, in character, in holiness, in love, in life itself. God bless you.